This building contains the most senior management units on the entirety of the flag land base. David Miscavige had big offices up there, conference room, etc. Um, and all of the RTC trainees would report here and work from here. And this is also where um, executives of Scientology would be interrogated for if they had, if they wanted to leave, if they had crimes against Scientology, as dictated by David Miscavige, that's where they would be interrogated as well. Mike told me he does believe uh, Miscavige has offices in the superpower building, but even if his, even if he has a nice little sw uh, wing of executive suites over there, this building is still housing the most senior management units on the base, which Claire just said is uh, the CMO organization and also what they call the flag land base organization. But you'd never know it, right? That's it's probably on purpose. WISE stands for World Institute of Scientology Enterprises. This is pretty much the only way people, one of the only ways people get into Scientology these days. WISE takes everything Hubbard wrote on how to manage a company and packages it up into course packs that looks like it doesn't have anything to do with Scientology. And then these business consulting groups sign up professionals who are in practice for themselves but didn't go to business school. So you're talking chiropractors, dentists, veterinarians, um, financial planners, and, um, and and these guys sign up for these business consulting classes without actually realizing that those consulting companies only exist to then get those people into Scientology. But they're, they're set up as, not, as secular companies, not religious. Yeah, that, true. That's true. Um, and so even though, again, it looks like kind of an unsuspecting building, uh, the organizations that operate under the WISE umbrella are actually responsible for, for getting most people into Scientology. We are about to come up onto the famous park bench where Mark Bunker committed the heinous crime of sitting down. The Scientology was so terrified of Mark Bunker, they immediately called the Clearwater police, handed them a copy of a 20-year-old injunction, and informed them Mark was violating their civil liberties. He must be detained. Um, I should take this opportunity to comment that those poor police officers um, you know, all that made it on the television show, and I have to say, I think those officers were just as embarrassed to be involved in all that as we were to watch them be involved in it. You know, the Clearwater Police can get into a tough situation where it's like, when Scientology calls, um, it's not like the cops can say, we're not coming. And, um, you know, because the police officers in that episode of the show had a copy of Mark's injunction, a lot of people were concluded that the Clearwater Police must just walk around with copies of Mark's injunction. When in reality, someone in probably that office right there called the police, the police came over, they literally handed the cop a copy of the injunction, gave them a 15 second description of what the injunction said. The police officer doesn't have the time to sit down and read the entire injunction. And all of a sudden it looks like the Clearwater Police are in the pocket of Scientology. When the truth is, they're really not. It really... Um, uh, <laughs> the Clearwater Police, uh, um, you know, they have to, they have to dot their I's and cross their T's when dealing with Scientology. As, as Scientology is litigious with the city of Clearwater as they are with everybody else. And, and back in the day, Mike, you might want to remind me how long ago it was, you know, uh, some of the city officials at that time overstepped in some of the stuff that they said and some of the stuff that they did. And Scientology successfully sued the city of Clearwater and it was awarded hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was somewhere between six hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars. And ever since then, the city has simply operated out of an abundance of caution. I will even go so far as to say fear when it comes to Scientology. And a lot of the times that looks like they're acting as if they're in Scientology's pocket. It's not true. They're acting out of an abundance of caution and fear. And to, uh, in my opinion, that's why it's so important to have someone like Mark Bunker on the city council. That's why later this year, I will be starting a campaign to run for city council. We need city leaders who can actually set the example. There is nothing to be afraid of. It is total BS. You know, we talk about Scientology purchasing buildings for the sake of having the property and keeping people away. Obviously, there's no building on here. What used to be here was checked. And David Miscavige's office sat in the corner with a window that looked out over Checkers and he didn't like the fact that Checkers was open late at night and people would come and hang around here. The wogs, the non-Scientologists were hanging around in Checkers. So the instant this property became available, it was purchased. And they didn't have anything to do with it, so they turned it into, quote, a park. But truthfully, 
if you go read the sign of it, it says this park is made available for the community, blah, blah, as long as you stick to the rules, you know, no fireworks, no alcohol, no this, no that. And Scientology likes to promote the fact that they do all this, this for the community, that this park is available for the community. With one big proviso, as long as they like you. Because the minute they do not like you, you have the police called on you if you just literally, Mark Bunker was sitting on that bench over there in the very far corner and there was not another soul, not in the park, not on the sidewalk, not on the other side of the street, nowhere. And they spotted him from the cameras, saw that he was over. We were not here with the film crew. He was sitting alone when they called the police. We showed up with the film crew after the fact. And that is the real story of what all this property in downtown Clearwater is about. It is not about the needs of Scientology to have property to do something with. It is about the need of Scientology and David Miscavige to keep the logs away so that they can't be involved and in observing what's going on. He doesn't want that aquarium parking lot, uh, aquarium lot across from the back of the Fort Harrison. And I'll explain to you exactly why when we get over there and you see that lot. He was willing to pay $14 million for a $4 million lot just to have it. And I will tell you why when we get over there, so stay tuned. The one additional factor that I personally witnessed is any, any property in proximity to David Miscavige's offices, the, an, another purpose in purchasing was paranoia, meaning David Miscavige's paranoia of anybody having property close to, within range to be able to hear his, or, you know, tap his phones, uh, listen in on what he's doing, get pictures of him, anything else. He did the same thing in Hammett, California at the headquarters. Any houses that were within, could, could shoot, pictures of his offices, he would buy them up um, solely because he absolutely believed people were watching him. Well, why? Because he does, he's does. he been doing that to people for years, so he knows true well what it means to be watched and followed and spied upon. But that is an additional reason for him purchasing property in proximity of his offices.